right, so we're just going to open up Simon here. So we're at this main Simon screen, and you can click here, or it's as Simon says, brings up this, it says mailbox rental, add a new box holder. So what we'll go ahead and we'll look at the date, November 11th, select next. Does the client want after hours front door access? Select that because they do. Next screen, and we're going to rent them box uh, 641. Scroll down here, 641. I'm going to select it there, and we're going to give them two keys. One would be the front door key, and one would be the box key. And click Next. Um, so they can get three, six, or 12 months. This screen isn't so useful, so we're going to go past it. It appears that you will have to cut two keys, so I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just going to type in some information. Okay, next screen. Use the box holder's business address when invoicing. You don't need to select that because we're just going to put it in their mailbox, unless the customer specifically requests that. Next screen, box holder communications, their phone number, their fax number if they have it. It doesn't look like he has one here. Email address. Okay, and box holder restricted mail. If you select this one, it'll just put the person's name in the box that says will they accept restricted mail. So most customers will. Restricted mail just being certified return receipt. We'll go to the next screen. Um, we don't use this screen as of now, which would be for credit card payments. Uh, we will type in their ID information. Go to the next screen. This would be for their spouse's name, which would actually generate an additional 1583 postal form if we filled this information in, which would mean we'd also need um, the spouse's driver's license and a second form of ID. Um, but most people will just use their, their name on the box. So we'll go to the next screen. Other names the person might use. This is a useful field because it doesn't generate a 1583, but it adds additional names to the ticket that we put on the back of the mailbox and also in the search field when we want to look up um, things. If you do an extra 1583 it just means you need more IDs. If you use this field it means you need fewer IDs which is kind of a nice way of getting around it with the post office and not having to give them multiple 1583s. If you do put a, something in here you would need to click this pencil button to write another name. I'll click next screen. Will this be used for soliciting business with the public? If it is, and I believe it was to be used for business, you select yes, and it just fills in the address information. Click next screen, um, kind of business. Uh, what kind of business do you have, sir? Uh, we're gonna be running a hot rod shop, selling hot rod parts. Hot rod, rod shop for members. Generally, I just put the person's name in who's renting the box, unless it's maybe a secretary who's renting it for uh, a company president or something like that and corporate officers and things registered corporation you know I always put NA in there and I've never had any problems so we'll just stick with that um, other mail recipients for the business or this is add information about other persons who may receive mail at this box besides the box holder spouse or the box holder's children um, so we're going to skip that and, sir, how many months did you want to rent? It's less expensive the more months you get, and we have 3, 6, and 12 months. What's the best deal you can give me? Uh, 12 months for $245. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right. So this shows the fees. We have a $15 setup fee. We have a $10 key deposit, and that's for two keys. And then we have the mailbox price. We'll click Next Screen. Um, this gives us some forms that we can print. We have an invoice which tells us all the details about the price. We have the 1583 form for the post office, the rear box, rear mailbox identification label, and a labeling sheet, which we don't generally need, um, or the mailbox rental agreement, because we have already had them fill out their mailbox rental agreement. We click Finish. It generates all those reports. And this is the first one. It's going to continue generating. 
I should switch to that Australian accent now. So, we're going to print out this form here. Box 641. Then we're going to click close once we hear it printing. I don't even know if that's accurate. Is that really a good Australian accent? You're going to have to tell me. So I'm going to close this one up. Sir, why are you speaking so funny? 